This is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, a, a new believer, asked this question: Why can't God forgive sins after people die? Sins were committed in this life, and they must be repented of in this life. Once people leave this life, they've entered into the divine presence. And at that point, their sins will either have been forgiven or they won't be. God has made provision for people's sin now. If, as you seem to suggest or simply want to know why God can't do it then, because once people saw the truth and reality of hell, and eternal judgment, they would all repent, not simply out of contrition or love of God or a desire to put things right with the Maker, but out of pure desire not to go to hell. Their hearts would still not be right. Their motive would be wanting to get away with what they did. That's not good enough for God. Wanting to get away with what we did is not a good enough motive to become a believer. It is true that that is a part of it. It is true that God uses it. Grace taught my heart to fear. Save yourself from this perverse generation. But it's not the heart of God. The heart of God desires to forgive and to see people not go to the place made for Satan and his angels because he loves them and he wants them to love him as his children and his friends. If people died and they saw the reality of eternal judgment in hell and the place of Satan made for his angels, they wouldn't be choosing the Lord out of any motive to be his child or his friend. They would simply be choosing the Lord out of a motive to escape the consequences of their sin. Now with God, it's the opposite. I love you as a father. I want to forgive you. You've made me your enemy and you've made yourself my enemy. I don't want it to be like that. I want to be your father. Jesus said, I want you to be my friends. That's what he said. Uh, on that basis, I will forgive you. On that basis, I will take away the ramifications and the judgment for your sin by taking it on myself on the cross. On that basis. But for people just to become, as it were, forgiven after they die, it would not be on that basis. There would be no way that they want that fellowship with God or that child-parent relationship or that entering God's family or that friendship with Christ. They would simply be doing it to get away with what they did. It's like this, a criminal. For a criminal to be rehabilitated, a genuine rehabilitated criminal regrets what he did, not simply because he has a custodial sentence and he's going to prison for it, but because he knows it was wrong. He knows he hurt people, and now he wants to love people. That would be a rehabilitated criminal. If it's simply somebody who's trying to get out of jail free or get an early parole or get probation when they've not had a change of heart or a change of mind, that is not a real rehabilitation. I hope that explains the reason. Yes, God does forgive, and he wants to save people from hell, and he uses the fear of hell to cause people to consider the claims of Christ. Absolutely. But there's more to it than that. He desires relationship. He desires fatherhood. He desires sonship. He desires eternal family. He desires friendship. He desires the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Unless people repent and believe and accept his forgiveness now in this life, 
that would not be possible in the world to come. They would simply want to get out of the mess they got themselves out of without having had that change of heart, without that second birth. I hope that explains uncertainty or your lack of clarity concerning the issue of why God does not forgive sin posthumously. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. My name is, is, that, ja my name is Jacob Rash. I ask, okay, let me, <laughs> let me continue. I would point out that there are false religions who believe in posthumous salvation, one of which is Roman Catholicism with the mass cards and purgatory and things of this nature. The other, of course, is um, Mormonism, being baptized on behalf of the dead, a pagan practice from Corinth, which they misapply as a Christian practice. There are false religions and cults which teach posthumous salvation, but it's not scriptural. Once again, thank you for your question. My name is James Jacob Prash. God bless. speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be shadows of the beast, shadows of the beast, how the coming antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the antichrist and also the false prophet how the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.